Clorette, the new chlorophyll candy mints and chewing gum that make breath kissing sweet, presents Rocky King Detective. Starring Roscoe Carnes as Chief of Homicide of the Metropolitan Police Force in an exciting adventure in crime. Tonight's story, One Minute for Murder. One minute to go, Nora. Helen, be a good girl and check that whole piano set, will you? Nora's cape may be hanging on it. I'll have a look, Mr. Bauer. Well, that first step was successful. What's your next step? Our next step is to keep you from talking for a while. Darling, as my director, you should know better than to smear my lipstick. And as your husband-to-be, I'm glad to see you returning to your cheerful self. Why, have I been so bad? Well, let's just say you're a little difficult. Oh, we're just nervous and getting ready for the opening night. You sure that's all it was? Of course I am. What about Art Paulson? Oh, darling, you're just imagining things. Been seeing a lot of him lately? I had no idea you kept such a sharp lookout on me. I didn't have to to know that something was wrong. Showed in your work. You seem to change when you met him. If there's anything between you and Paulson, I wish you'd tell me. I'll get it. Oh, hello, Bauer. Miss Wade in? You've got an opening performance tonight. Hello, Art. Come in. I'll talk to you now. Uh, I'm sorry, darling, but this is really private. Well, why does he have to bother you tonight? That's my business. Now, please, leave us alone. Okay. I told you to stay away from me. Oh, I can't do that. You mean too much to me. <laughs> In fact, I brought along something to prove. I want you to pay particular attention to the underscored lines. Take me away. I'll be right there. Suppose I take this to the police. Well, go ahead, if you think you can stand the publicity. Oh, hello, Helen, my sweet. Hurry, Nora. The sound effects have already started. Why did you have to come here tonight? Oh, now, now aren't you glad to see me? <laughs> Wait for me here. Sure. You better wait. He can keep up with Junior. You know, I don't understand how the inspector got so sick so quickly. Soda pop, popcorn, frankfurters, and frankfurters, that can do it. You shouldn't let him eat so many, that's all. Sergeant Lane, I wasn't at the baseball game with him. <sighs> I wasn't there getting excited and rooting myself like a fool and stuffing myself like a horse. Well, I just stuffed myself like a horse and on the most delicious meal I've ever eaten. Oh. You know, if I could find a girl like you, I'd marry her, Mrs. King. Well, it certainly won't do you any harm. Huh? That was all good nourishing food. It'll never hurt you. <laughs> I would suppose it will. Oh, just a minute. Yeah. Excuse me. Hello, Inspector King's home. Sorry to bother you, Mrs. King, but is Sergeant Lane there? Oh, yes, uh, yeah, just a minute. Uh, it's for you, Sergeant. Oh, thank you, Mrs. King. Hello, Lane here. Hello, Sergeant Lane. This is Officer Thompson. How's the inspector? Oh, he's getting along okay. Should be up in a couple of days. What's up? Yeah, we just got a call from the Broad Street Theater. Hmm? They found Art Paulson dead in the star's dressing room, shot with a 32. Art Paulson? He writes uh, some kind of a scandal column, doesn't he? He did. Tommy, is the show still going on? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what he wants you to do. Get the full squads down there and cover all the exits and the entrances. I want you to get the names and addresses of everybody in the audience, but don't stop the show. Get it after the show, and also get the uh, dressing room fingerprinted for me, too. Right. Uh, show uh, still going on. You said what about a gun? Uh, missing. 
It is, huh? Yeah. How long has it been since he's dead? Doc says around 8.30. Okay. I'll tell you what I want you to do, Thompson. Get all of uh, his personal stuff for him. You put it in a single pile, and I'll look at it when I get down there, okay? Right. Oh, right can I'll we remove see. the body? Uh, yeah, as soon as the doc's finished. I'll see you down there. Well, do, Bobby. Yeah, bye-bye. Well, well, what's that? Oh, it's Rocky. He pounds on the wall when he needs me. Uh, Just a minute, dear. Well, Mrs. King, I'm afraid i got to run. Oh, but you haven't eaten your dessert. Well, Mrs. King, I've devoted my entire life to the police. Oh, you're getting more like the inspector every day. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you forgot your hat, Sergeant. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just could never do any work without my hat. Good night and thanks a lot. Good night, Sergeant Lane. One more I have to go, darling. Try to go through with it. It means a great deal to both of us. Is it time to go on, though? Yes, come on. leave everything alone until the sergeant gets here. But your men have finished here. No, I'm afraid we've just begun. Oh, uh, hello, Thompson. Anything new since I spoke? Not a thing, sergeant. Well, where was the body lying? It wasn't lying. It was sitting right here backwards. Oh, really? Well, who's this young lady? Helen Burns, Nora Wade's maid. She found him and called us. Hey, what time was it when you found the body, Miss Wade? Right after the opening curtain went up. About 8.45, I heard the shot. I see. Oh, where were you then? In the wings. Wings? Just off stage. I heard the shot just as the curtain went up. I ran in here, and there he was. Did you uh, happen to see anybody leave the room? No, sir. Would you know why Paulson paid a visit here tonight? He came to see Nora. For any particular reason? I don't know, but it wasn't unusual. They were seeing a lot of each other. I see. No, Sergeant. It wasn't anything romantic. Nora is engaged to Mr. Bauer. Oh, is that so? Well, who's Mr. Bauer? He's the director of the show. Well, was he here tonight, too? Yes, of course. Naturally. I called him as soon as I saw Paulson was dead. Uh, tell me, how did Mr. Bauer and Mr. Paulson get along? Do you know? They weren't exactly friends. All right. Uh, Thompson, where's Bauer now? Somewhere's backstage. All right, go out there and dig him up for me, will you, please? Right. I'd better show you where he is. The show is still on and backstage is blacked out. Mm, all right. Sergeant? Sorry to bother you at a night like this. I know it's tough enough on an opening night without having this happen, too. Uh, is the play going to be over soon? Yes, this last scene. I wondered whether you happen to know, Mr. Bowers, whether your uh, wife was uh, ever uh, your wife-to-be, if she was ever involved with the police before. Nora? That's yeah. impossible. Well, well, I certainly hope it is for your sake. I uh, found this little item here, and it seemed to be underlined. I'd like to read it to you. Yes. Uh, what new dramatic star has spent several of her seasons in prison? Let me see that. Certainly. It certainly wasn't her. Paulson put this scandal sheet out himself. Made a lot of enemies for him. Including yourself? I never pretended to like him. Well, that's the end of the show. Now, well, if you don't need me anymore, I'd like to go and help this way. Oh, no, I think her maid can take care of that. You just wait right here, please. Oh. You're wonderful, darling. Just wonderful. I thought it would never end. I... I couldn't even take my call. Nora, this is Sergeant Lane. I'd like to talk to you. Yes, I would. I shan't keep you very long, Mr. Wade. I'm sorry to trouble you tonight. I uh, wondered, uh, why did Mr. Paulson come and visit you here tonight? He wanted an interview for his paper. And had been working on this interview very long? I don't understand. Well, uh, I'm sure you do. This isn't the first time that Mr. Paulson came to visit you, is it? No. No, it isn't. The first time he came was during the final rehearsals, and after that, well, uh, he was just interested in me. Mr. Bauer! Mr. Bauer! Pardon? Yeah, sure, okay. Excuse me, dear. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wade, is this the story that Art Paulson was after? Has nothing to do with me. Well, have you ever been in trouble with the police before, anywhere? Never. Then would you know who this article is in reference to? I have no idea. Oh, no, thank you, Helen. I'll take my makeup off at home. Well, I suppose that's all for tonight, Miss Wade. You can go home now. Fine, I think it's a very fine thing for you to have gone on the way you did. It must not have been a very easy job. It's a tradition in the theater. 
I was trying to live up to it. I think it's very fine that you did, too. Thank you. Oh, uh, Miss Way, are you on stage when the curtain goes up? No, I make an entrance a little later on. You do? Mm-hmm. All right, that's all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. She's the one passing that? Oh, I don't know. I wish you'd tell me, but I know she's not telling me all she knows. Is this chair the fourth Mr. Dan? Yeah, the bullet caught him in the chest. Chest? The powder burns? No. Well, and it seems to me that the bullet could only have come from one of two places. It might have come from this window here. No, no, it's a blank wall. And the only, the only other thing is it could have come from this door, but from the outside. Where'd you put Paulson's things? Right on the front there. Oh, good. He had 250 bucks on him. A lot of dough. Yeah, whoever did it didn't do it for money. Hmm. This is a dress. I think we'll keep this. Question the other people in the theater? Yeah, cast and stage hands. Nobody saw nothing. Well, nobody ever does. Is this all that Paulson had on him? Yeah, that's all. No keys? No. Wonder how he got into his apartment. Well, he probably lives in a hotel and leaves it with a desk clerk. No, according to this card and its address, too, he lives at a very swanky apartment house. I wonder. Somebody might have come in here and taken the keys off Paulson's body while Miss Burns was out calling the police. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going over to Paulson's apartment and snoop around. Somebody might have been paying him a very recent visit. In the meantime, you search around, see if you can find that gun. I know it's going to be tough, Thompson, but there's a lot of places in the theater you can hide it, and I know you'll find it. Yeah. Good night. Good night. See you back at the office. Bye. Talking about it. Can't you see I am tired? How would you like to go through what I did tonight? I know, but I'm worried. Do you think the sergeant will find out? I don't know, and I'm quite sure he won't find out from me. But suppose Let's he... Let's just stop talking about it. You'll have to do enough talking later. Now I'm going to get some sleep. I have a matinee tomorrow. <laughs> Take a look at it. Put it down on the desk. Come on, put it down. Alner. Who's she? Oh, wait, a state name. Her real name's Bradley. Look, Sergeant, when you showed me that paper, I figured Paulson was trying to blackmail her. That's why I came up here. I had to know what he had on her. 
How'd you get in? I had the key. I took it from Paulson's body while Helen Burns was calling the police. Very wise, aren't you? Now you're into this with both feet, mister. Don't you know that homicide's a police matter? And I don't want you to forget it. Now, where do you live? Arlington Hotel. Okay, my advice to you is to get back there as fast as you can. And let us find out who's blackmailing who around here. Now, oh, go on, go on. Sergeant, I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. Go on. Owner Brad. Holy smokes. Hey, hey! Yes, sir. I want you to take this stuff downstairs. I'm going down to talk to the doorman myself. I'll meet you in the car. Right. I'm glad you're here. I had to see you. Now, listen, Mike. I, I know you were jealous of Paulson. I know that you thought all kinds of things, but Lee, me, it wasn't like that. Well, why'd you go on seeing him? Is that important now? It is to me. What's more important is that you tell me the truth. I'd like a little of that myself. A man's been killed. A man I think was trying to blackmail you. I saw the file Paulson had on you. I tried to steal it. Sergeant Lane walked in on me. Has he got it now? I presume so. Why don't you tell him everything about this? What do you mean by everything? Just what you know. I suppose by that you mean who killed Art Paulson? That's exactly what I mean. Now get out of my way. Inspector King's office. Oh, he is Sergeant Lane there. No, I'm sorry, isn't but Oh, just a minute, please. Sergeant, for you. Oh, good. Mrs. King, I think. Oh, thank you. Hello, Mrs. King. How's the inspector? Oh, oh, he's still a big kid. Now I'm having trouble keeping him in bed. Well, that's a good sign. It means he'll be out soon. Uh, well, he'd get better sooner if you didn't call him. Me call him? Yes, uh, his slippers were on the other side of the bed. I know he was at the phone. Oh, I didn't call him, ma'am. Oh, then he called you. Oh, yeah, he must have called headquarters while I was out. Probably wanted to know how the case was going. Oh, all right then, Sergeant. I promise you won't call him. But if he calls you, tell him not to do it. He's got to get his rest so he can get well. <laughs> okay, he probably won't talk to me unless I solve this case anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. All right, good night. Well, what about the gun? No trace of it. Did you find anyone at Paulson's? You bet I did. I found Bauer at Paulson's, and he was looking through these items, and it's about a girl named Eleanor Bradley. Eleanor Bradley? Yeah, according to this guy Bauer, Eleanor Bradley is this Wade woman, Nora Wade. And Bradley served time up in Boise, Idaho, for grand larceny. Wow, was there any pictures of her in there? No, unfortunately, there isn't, so I'll have to wire Boise and get him to shoot through some wire oh. photos. If Eleanor Bradley turns out to be Nora Wade, that means we know who Paulson was blackmailing. If not... If not, then we check every single name in Paulson's little black book against every name in that theater. Paulson had a lot of money for a guy who was running just a two-bit scandal sheet. I'd like to know how he got it. Well, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You get busy on that phone and go up wire ahead to Boise, Idaho. Okay. There's a couple of angles in this case that just doesn't seem to fit together. I'm going over to this guy Bauer's house and pick up a copy of that script. I might be able to find something from reading the play. I'll see okay. you back here in the All right. morning. All right. All right. Teletype, please. I'd like to send a teletype to Boise, Idaho, Chief of Police. Did you get in late last night? Why not so late? How did you know I went out? I wanted to talk to you. I went to your room. It was empty. Oh? What did you want to talk about? About blackmail. I know that's what Paulson was trying to do. And the police think blackmail is a good reason for murder. You're the second person that's implied that I killed him. All I mean is... I know exactly what you mean. Now get out. All right, Nora. If that's the way you feel about it. Idaho. Holy smokes. 
Helen Burns and Eleanor Bradley. Yes, she's Nora's maid. Well, that really throws this race wide open. Funny, both their names being Bradley. Yeah, it's funny, all right, and I don't think it's a coincidence. Evidently, Paulson was trying to blackmail Nora with this, but the only possible reason she'd pay off would be to protect somebody close to her, like... like a sister. Yeah, but it still doesn't tell us who did it. And there's always Bauer. He was jealous of Paulson. Sure, and it also helps if we could find that murder gun, too. But you won't find it in the theater. I really combed that joint. Oh, place. great. Go get me the morning paper. We'll get around here somewhere. Huh? Get me the morning paper. I want to take a look at the theatrical page. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See if there's a matinee on that play. Here we are. Stormy Sunset, Stormy Sunset, Stormy Sunset. Stormy Sunset Matinee 225. Boy, we're in luck. We are? You bet. I want you to call Boise, Idaho again and check on that sister angle. You get it? Yeah. Then we're going to the theater this afternoon and catch that matinee, and here's what we're going to do. Glad to see that you're here too, Bauer. Did you find out anything new for us, Sergeant? And nothing new to me, I suppose, and nothing new to you either. Look, I have a matinee to do in a few minutes. I'm in no mood for joking. Joking? It would be less of a joke if you would reported the fact that you were being blackmailed to begin with. I told you they'd find out. That's right. And we also found out that you're Eleanor Bradley, Nora Wade's sister. What else did you find out? What else? We found out that Eleanor Bradley did time up in Boise, Idaho for grand larceny. Isn't that enough? That's all there is. No. There's still a slight case of murder. I didn't kill him. No, but you certainly have motive. With a scandal like that hanging over your head that could ruin your career, a blackmailer would stand to take money away from you for the rest of his life. Don't talk, Nora. Don't say anything till you see a lawyer. Who are you trying to protect, yourself or Nora? What do you mean, myself? Just what I said. With Nora as a star, you could really hit the top being a big director. Until you figured out that Paulson was trying to beat your time with her. But, Sergeant, we were all outside when it happened. No, not all of you. One of you was in this room, and I'm going to find out which one. I want each one of you to take the places you took last night when the curtain went up. Now, come on. Please, don't think we'd better hurry. All all right. Right. It is one minute to Christmas. All let's right, go. folks, let's go. Okay. Found out everything we want at all. Sit down, we'll wait till the act's over. Right. Oh, everything goes smoothly in the first act? Good enough. I want you to stand outside the door. Don't let anybody come in, but keep your ears open, okay? Well, fine. All right, folks, anybody here or notice anything that was unusual? I thought not. You'd better come along with me, Miss Burns. Me? Why me? I just asked you if you heard anything unusual. How could I? The sound effects drowned out everything. That's just what I thought, and I proved it last night by reading the script to myself. We fired a shot as the curtain went up in the first act. We fired the shot the same time that you said you heard a shot being fired when the curtain went up last night, only you didn't hear it today. But I told you, the sound effects. That's exactly right, the sound effects. If you couldn't hear the shot today because of the sound effects, how could you possibly no. have heard the shot last night unless you were in this room to no. fire the shot yourself? Now, where's no. the gun? Here, Helen! Don't be a fool, Miss Burns. Give me that gun. No. Come on, don't be a fool. What chance have I got with my record? Who's going to care when I say I killed Paulson because he was blackmailing my sister and using me as a threat? Nobody. No, I'm sorry I was so much trouble to you. Sorry, you're not... Helen! Ah! Ah! I had a powder for him. Take her down to headquarters, too, will you? I'm sure he'll want to put her under psychiatric observation. Right, then. Now, check the gun with ballistics, too. I'm sure you'll find out it's the same gun that killed Paulson. Right. Sorry this had to happen, folks. But if you would have come to us in the beginning when Paulson started to blackmail you, all of this could have been avoided. Remember, there's only one way to expose blackmail, and that's to call the police. Just remember that. I'm sorry, folks. Good night. Good luck with your play. Thank you, Sergeant. Bye.
Well, darling, we still have a show to do. Hi, folks. Did you miss Rocky? Well, I know we did. He came down with a little bit of food poisoning a while ago, but according to latest reports, he's balking and staying in bed, so it can only mean one thing. He's up and around. And I know he'll be back again with us next week, so we'd sure appreciate your listening in again. So, good night, folks. Lots of love. Original music composed and played by Jack Ward. Tune in again next week for another exciting adventure of Rocky King Detective, starring Roscoe Carnes as Rocky King.